clandestine live coming to you from scottsdale arizona feeling all cocky in my suit man i even put my arrowhead man dave got me this this necklace a while back man you know do the research on the minerals man i'm serious dude it's not just for show we're talking spirit clandestine live on scene like i said Green Thumb Events. We're here at Green Industry Night here at Wasted Grain. This is a hemp and cannabis based networking event for people in the industry, consumers to really come out, connect with each other, and really have a great time while doing it. So, this is Tim, Tim Sultan with MENA, Marijuana Industry Trade Association meeting. We're just uh, here talking uh, about MENA and kind of giving everybody a little bit of insight about what you guys do. Sure. Yeah, MENA is the Marijuana Industry Trade Association. Founded uh, about uh, four years ago, and we represent everyone in the industry in Arizona, all the medical patients, uh, from the dispensaries to the patients, the ancillary businesses, everyone in the community. And we have a monthly meeting here in Phoenix, and it's really fun. We have about two to 300 people who come. We have great speakers, keep people up to date on legislative things, and we advocate for patients in the industry. Yes, you do. Yes, you do familiar with normal for years for a lot of years and seeing some of the things you're doing um, and I'm very anxious to hear more about how it plays into the new economy into the new uh, pharmaceuticals you know as we start exploring integrative medicine and more things we start learning what CBDs are and and what psychoactive chemicals are etc I really want to hear your words because I know you're touching, you're, you're responsible for some of the reasons we can come here tonight. Oh, I, I so appreciate that. So, normal started in 1970, but human beings started using cannabis in about 12,000 BC. During the early hunter-gatherer days, it's, some people say it's the crop that started agriculture because people can eat from it, they can make their clothes from it, and they can hear the, heal their sicknesses from it. So uh, this proceeded until about 1937 when the United States, in an effort to shut down the hemp industry and pharmaceutical cannabis, prohibited it. And we, we suffered underneath that for the last, well, almost 80 years, or more than 80 years now. Um, I've been working on this issue here in Arizona since 2012. That's how I first met Andrew. Andrew was an advocate back in 2014 working on creating a community space for people who are activists. We would hold our meetings in his uh, facility and such. So that's the background on it. This last year, after many years of trying, we finally succeeded in getting hemp to pass, signed by the governor. So hemp production is legal in Arizona. By May, we will be putting seeds in the ground. Now, this will, of course, create an opportunity to make and, and distribute CBD products, which are what you refer to. But, you know, we live in a desert here in Arizona, and one of the great things about hemp is it's a, it's a low water crop. Places uh, that would be normally desert can end up having fields of hemp because it doesn't take the same kind of water that, say, uh, tomatoes do. Um, and, and much of uh, tribal land, especially in western part of the state, has water access. Uh, the uh, the Crit tribe in La Paz County, the Mojave tribe in Mojave County, they have hundreds of thousands of acres. It's already developed land. This will give them an opportunity to, to catch up with America's green rush, you know. And, and they're ex expecting that hemp by itself will be a $10 billion industry uh, by 2022, so. Right, that was hemp by itself. You know, once again, uh, you talked about it being a crop that's also a sustainable crop. Yes. Uh, something that's interesting, you talk about the sustainability, in uh, hemp repairs uh, the soil. In Italy, they uh, have used hemp crops to uh, heal 
uh, industrial polluted soils to the point that they can can grow the land again. That's called phytoremediation. The, the hemp plant sucks the poisons up out of the soil and uh, then the soil is, is clean. Then they can use those hemp plants uh, to make uh, hemp crete and they actually build houses on top of the land that they have. That's have what reached. I was going to say, even hemp can build your house. Yeah, yeah hemp crete, I like that. It, it's like back in the day, uh, butchers use everything but the squeal on the pig. Right. You can use everything but the squeal on the hemp plant too, and it doesn't even squeal. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Well, I've heard it say that the hemp plant uh, lives because of humans, and in turn, humans can live because of the hemp plant. Uh, you know, you talked about cr crops and economics and economy. We all know if you do any studying uh, what the farming uh, industry is like in the United States, we can reach out, and you said the green rush, you know. Yeah. And we all talked about and we've all heard about organic farming that's been relatively new to us probably not so much to this young guy Andrew right but organic farming and all this stuff it's it become a rush as well it affected our, our economy right I always educate in a way of if you understand anything about commodities just study coffee a little bit Stud, right. study tobacco study things that are commonly traded and and look at the families that they support you know, and now let's talk about coffee isn't necessarily even a medication, right? It has it has medicinal qualities, but we're talking, um, yeah. right? And it's also coffee can be used for things. You know, I, I bought logs I could burn, etc. But I have not heard of a house being made of coffee. No, uh, no, no house is made of coffee. And you talked about CBD. So there's so many different medicines that can be made out of uh, cannabis prior to that prohibition. Some people say that as much as a third of the medicines that were available in the American uh, pharmacies were cannabis based. So having CBD available again is going to give the opportunity for all this research that's been blocked in the United States. This last summer, the FDA and the DEA approved uh, a medicine called Epidiolex, which is pure cannabis extract. It, it doesn't have other things thrown in it. So it, it is proof that that marijuana is medicine as far as the FDA and the DEA are concerned. Uh, when the lawsuits are over and America has the opportunity to produce this, expect to see medical miracles. That's right. Is it hemp hour? Is it hemp hour, anyone? Anyone? It is. It is. Always hemp hour. <laughs> right? Well, I'm with Teresa here and we're having a great time at this mixer and we're networking, man. and. Happy to meet you. Teresa's a chef with good things coming, right? Tell us tell us what those good things are. So we have four product lines. We have fruit jellies, which are vegan, all natural fruit juice and gluten free. And they come in 100 milligram packets. And we have three different flavors, pomegranate, yuzu, and la cucaracha, which is a chili spice lemon lime fruit jelly. Oh, nice. Yes. We also have a French chocolate brownie coming in at 50 milligrams. And then we have a lemon lavender hard candy using local lavender and local honey. And that's a great option for new patients, microdose at 2.5 milligrams. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay, so you're the chef, man. I can just imagine you going and saying, okay, I'm gonna get lavender. And I'm gonna go find it locally. Tell us about that stuff, about the creation of these products and your your recipes. So most definitely. So as a chef, I want to use local ingredients. Um, I also have a bachelor's in nutrition, so I'm always very health focused. And that's the reason behind this brand is that it's um, we're all chefs. It's very chef driven, precision dose, using high quality ingredients. Uh, patients come first, so we got to put quality ingredients in with quality medicine. Excellent, man. Well, I'm with that, and I'm th I'm picturing a English muffin with that la cucaracha on it, right? Yes. Right? Yes, the fruit jellies. So they're very similar to um, a gummy, but they have a different texture than a gummy, a little softer. So uh, based off of, of a traditional French recipe, uh, pâté de fruit. So it's very delicious uh, candy, uh, lower in sugar because we're using all natural fruit juice. Nice. Well, you heard it. Good things to come, correct? Good things coming. Good things coming. Well, there's good things to come from good things coming, right? And I know we can find you on Instagram, I would hope, right? Social media, we can Google you, right? So say it again, what do we Google? Uh, Google good things coming. You can follow us at Instagram at good things coming. 
Good things coming. You heard it, man. Try it. I'm going to be one of the first customers, I hope, with the low cucaracha. Am I too late? No, not at all. You're not too late. You can definitely get in on the low cucarachas. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Teresa. Uh, thank you so uh, thanks for hanging out. Thank I look forward to seeing it.